We saw that Alvarez and Alvarez created a stir in 1982 with their evidence of a major meteorite impact. But that was not the first evidence. The Australian government astronomer George Dodwell found evidence almost 50 years earlier. He was studying the changing tilt of the Earth's axis. He found that in libraries all over the world there are records of the tilt of the Earth's axis going back to the ancient civilizations Rome, Greece, China, Egypt, South America. Dodwell had been taught the standard astronomical story that the tilt of the Earth's axis is controlled by the gravitational attraction of the Sun and planets on the Earth's equatorial bulge. Earth is a little fatter around the equator than it would be if it were a perfect sphere. The pull of the Sun and the planets on this bulge should cause the Earth to rock slowly backwards and forwards through about two and a half degrees every 41,000 years. It was supposed to follow a curve called Newcomb's curve after the scientist who did the maths and drew the graph. But Dodwell found that the observation only followed Newcomb's curve back in time to about 1850. From there on, they follow a completely different curve. He was told that this was because the ancients couldn't measure very accurately, so their observations could be ignored. Dodwell went through the records to find out how the ancients measured the tilt of the Earth's axis and how accurate their measurements were. He found that they used what's basically a very simple apparatus called a gnomon. It consists of a vertical pole standing on a horizontal surface. Some were actually very large structures, one of the most famous being the great obelisk in Rome. The length of the sun's shadow was measured at the winter and summer solstices. The angle from the end of the summer shadow to the top of the gnomon to the end of the winter shadow is twice the tilt of the Earth's axis. There's a check on the accuracy because the angle between the upright and the point midway between the ends of the two shadows is the latitude. So if the latitude is accurate, then the tilt of the axis is also accurate. Dodwell made a replica of an ancient gnomon at his university in Adelaide. He tested it and had a number of his colleagues test it too. He found that the accuracy was very good, typically within one minute of arc, which is one sixtieth of a degree. By checking the accuracy of the latitudes where the ancient measurements were made, he found that the ancients were just as accurate. He also came across a famous Roman mathematician called Manilius. For many years, Manilius measured the shadow cast by the great obelisk in Rome. Brass scales were laid into the plaza to prevent inaccuracy in measurement due to moving them. In writing about his work, he said, These observations now for 30 years are not consistent. There has been some change in the universal Earth by which it has moved away from its centre, as I have detected myself, and hereof also from other places. The ancients believed that the Earth was unchanging. For them to change their mind, they must have been very confident in the accuracy of their results. Unlike many scientists today, who often cling to pet theories even when observations clearly show they're wrong. Dodwell was convinced that the discrepancy between the ancients and Newcomb was not due to inaccuracies. Dodwell plotted the difference between the measurements and Newcomb and found that the discrepancies fitted a logarithmic sine curve. This is the curve of recovery of a gyroscope after being struck by a blow. The point where the curve of observations becomes vertical shows the time when the blow struck and the angle to which the gyroscope tilted. The curve shows the Earth tilting to about 26.5 degrees 
and it shows that the impact happened about 4,500 years ago. Dodwell calculated that for the Earth to have tilted so far, the impacting body must have been about 200 kilometres in diameter, which is exactly what NASA calculated more than 60 years later from a completely different set of data. Not surprisingly, the scientific establishment were very sceptical and were reluctant to publish Dodwell's findings. So Dodwell looked for confirmation. He looked at well-known structures which had been aligned to the sun when they were built. Perhaps the most famous of these in Europe is Stonehenge. Stonehenge was built when the Druids were at the height of their power, almost certainly between 3 and 400 BC. It was aligned so that the sun rose on its main axis at the summer solstice, Midsummer's Day. Astronomers have deduced its age using Newcomb's curve. They say it must have been constructed in about 1900 BC, much more than the thousand years before the rise of the Druids. Archaeologists say the astronomers are wrong. The great temple of Amun-Ra at Karnak in Egypt was aligned with the setting sun. Its history and its use are detailed on the walls and pillars in hieroglyphics. So we know what happened there. The inner sanctuary was the central feature. From there, the main passage with columns and pylons on either side led to a walkway with ram-headed sphinxes on either side. At sunset, on the summer solstice, Pharaoh walked down the avenue of sphinxes and through the pylons and columns resplendent in the light of the setting sun. As the sun reached the horizon, Pharaoh entered the inner sanctuary in the last blaze of sunlight and the sacrifice was offered on the golden altar. But there's a problem. The temple was completed in about 1570 BC and to shine down the path from the ram's-headed sphinxes to the inner sanctuary, the axis tilt had to be 24 and a half degrees. But Newcomb's curve doesn't go down that far. It rises in a cycle of rocking backwards and forwards and only just touched 24 and a half degrees on a previous cycle, thousands of years earlier. So according to the astronomers, the sun could not have shone into the inner sanctuary. But history tells us it did. And on Dodwell's curve of observations, it shines in at exactly the right date. The archaeologists and astronomers disagreed here, just as they did at Stonehenge. Newcomb's curve says the alignment there could only be correct in 1900 BC. But Dodwell's curve shows that the archaeologists were right again. The alignment was perfect in 400 BC. So Dodwell's curve of ancient observations was shown to be correct. And not only for these ancient temples, but for others, including the Temple of the Sun at Tiahuanaco in Peru. But the astronomical authorities still refused to publish Dodwell's work. It destroys Lyell's timescale, which the establishment is committed to. But we might ask, which time scale fits better with other observations about the past, Lyle's or Dodwell's? Well, let's have a look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.